Today I was going to say that I'm really excited about today's video, but if you look around, you can tell there's not very much to be excited about, unless you're excited about snow, which I'm not. But today I actually want to do a comprehensive tour of all of our season extension and how it's done in the snow. This is one of the top things that people have asked me about when it comes to high tunnels, low tunnels, caterpillar tunnels, and how they handle snow. So we are now in sub-zero winter. We finally got the winter that we were expecting, at least I was expecting. I mentioned it in my videos in the early fall or late summer, if you go back, uh, reading the Farmer's Almanac, saying that it would be a really cold and snowy winter, and it has certainly become that now, though it didn't start that way. It started very mild, but now we've got it. Winter is here to stay for a while, and there's tons of snow on the ground, and I'm gonna go check out the tunnels and see how they've done. So the low tunnels here have done great, except that one. That one was pieced together with two pieces of poly, and you can tell that uh, it didn't handle the snow weight there, so it's collapsed in on that little part. No big deal, really. All this, all these crops that are covered now are overwintered spinach, except for the, the furthest tunnel over there. You can see I'm trudging through quite a bit of snow just to get back here. And um, one thing, too, is uh, one challenge we have, and this would be a challenge for any urban farmer, is if your tunnels are close together and you're in a place that gets a lot of snow, you gotta be careful because as the tunnel sheds off the snow, and they always will, you'll get these huge buildup points. And so I've got like four feet of snow almost right up to the side of the greenhouse. I can't walk through that. Or I don't want to because it's gonna, my boots aren't deep enough. So that's one challenge there. And I'm sure that's gonna be an issue at some of the other tunnels um, that might've been close together. But the nice thing here is, and I've mentioned this one a few times is, when you space your, your low tunnels apart, at least by one bed, you don't get them collapsing in on the sides. So that's good. So I don't really want to uh, uncover these because that would be a lot of work. But I can see that they're intact and the, the, the frames are all there. So the crops should be more or less good by the time we uh, want to get into them, which will be, you know, we'll probably have the snow, hopefully, have the snow melted by late February in which time we'll uncover these and potentially start harvesting crops, but we'll see. So we haven't been maintaining these tunnels because, or they're not in production. So um, we haven't been scraping the snow off. And as it sits right now, I don't think I would worry about it. There's, there, I mean, there's not two feet of snow up there because it's been shedding um, and it's in the center. But if we were to get another big dump of snow, I'd probably come out here and uh, get some of it off. Though, I can probably just do that and a lot of it will come down. Um, easy way to do this is just come in here with a broom and just whack this and it'll just all shed down to the side. So it might be something we have to do, but I'm not really gonna trouble myself with it right now. But actually one thing I was gonna point out here is this Salanova is still alive. It hasn't, hasn't been fully um, frozen through. Like it is, it is frozen, but if it were dead, it would be brown or it would just kind of disintegrate. But it's still standing and the neat thing here is that because it was cut before it got really cold, there's, it's all kind of consolidated down to the core. So that's actually a good thing going into winter. So there's a chance that we might get another cut from this come February, we'll see. Depends on the weather. But if this was all fully long, like hadn't been harvested, and then we got that, that freeze, there'd been so, there would be so much matter to freeze that it wouldn't bounce back because it would all mush down on itself and then it wouldn't grow back. But the way it is now is the leaves are all separated. So this has a far better chance of thawing out and surviving than it would if it was bigger. See the build up here between the tunnels? There's six feet between these tunnels and that's tight, you know, I think, most operations, if they're in snowier climates than ours, would have 10 feet between the tunnels because even then, if you get a lot of snow, it's still gonna build up. 
the, the risk here is that if this builds up too high, it'll start to push the sides in and it'll actually compromise your crops on the inside and potentially damage your greenhouses. So, you know, six feet I found is the tightest I can go in our climate. And at the home base, you'll see there's actually less than six feet on between our nursery and our hothouse. It was a decision, I ha you know, I had to make that decision in order to put that in. Otherwise I wouldn't have had the width of the greenhouse because I just don't have that much space at the home base. But you'll see it's, it's deep. The, uh, the good thing there is that the nursery is a permanent greenhouse and the, uh, the hothouse is semi-permanent and it has really strong sides. So I'm not too worried about that one collapsing on the sides, but you never know. These are risks you take. So coming into this tunnel. Holding snow pretty well, but again, you know, doesn't take much to get that stuff off. This tunnel isn't technically a caterpillar tunnel. Well, it kind of is, but it's not in the sense like the other ones we have, which we're gonna go check out now. Because this one is using channel lock. It's got more structure to it. It's the same type of piping as a caterpillar tunnel, but we've got a permanent ridge pole along the top without the strapping, and we've got channel lock on it. So everything's a lot more secure on this tunnel. But we're gonna go to the other plot where we've got all of our overwintered carrots and check out the tunnels there and see how they're doing. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Ho -ho -ho. Okay, so we haven't done any maintenance on these tunnels at all. We haven't shaken off any of the snow. You can see there's at least a solid foot, 30, 30 centimeters of snow on top of these. You can see how it kind of breaks off between the rungs and then comes down. But nothing has collapsed so far. Frankly, I'm not really worried about these at all. They look good. Um, to get into these would be a real pain. Apparently we've got a week coming up or hopefully, hopefully at least a few days next week where the temperature warms up a little bit. Mark says he's gonna get in here and harvest some more carrots. So we'll see how that goes, but these ones haven't been tampered with. We haven't hit any of the snow off these at all, and they've been holding up really well. So these are the traditional, or not, they're not traditional, but these are the caterpillar tunnels as they come from Farmer's Friend. And uh, all the same stuff. We've got the uh, webbing ridge pole along the top. Um, one thing actually we do differently than, um, when you get them from Farmer's Friend is we do put channel lock on the last bow, at least in a few parts. So that, that will help with snow load because it'll keep the um, bow from moving because as you see snow pile up here, that bow is gonna want to go towards the weight so it'll slide around. And because we have the channel lock there, it stops it from doing that. So that certainly makes them hold up a lot better than if you didn't so so far so good here this is what I was talking about which is a little dicey is the fact that these are only four feet apart and I've got at least up to my knees of snow there so it's a bit dodgy fortunately this has got at the bottom of this it's got a two foot sort of rigid, uh, I'll show you. It's got this rigid insulation down there with landscape fabric over it, and then a two by four running along it. So it's somewhat rigid, so it can handle the, um, the snow coming in there. And then looking along here, we've got a lot of snow build up in here. This tunnel right now is not being used. It's, we're freezing it out to uh, kill all the pests, and then we'll plant it with Salanova come February. But lots of snow. Caterpillar tunnels in the backyard here doing fine as well. And by fine, I mean we don't need to go into them day in and day out. If we did, it would be a hassle. 
but if you're if you want season extension to go in and out of throughout the winter you're better off investing in proper tunnels high tunnels that are meant to do that i don't really think caterpillar tunnels are meant to do that at least in snowy climates i wouldn't recommend using them for that and i got another two feet of snow on the side of this tunnel too so a little bit hard to get to the compost pile right now without getting snow up to your knees so that is it for the vlog today guys i just wanted to give you an update on how these tunnels are performing and so far they're good nothing really majorly to can be concerned about but our production is really slowed down all we're really doing right now are microgreens and we've got lots of that going on so i'll catch you guys later <laughs> Oh,